I'm Amanda, the Botanical Burnette, and welcome to my channel. <sighs> We're gonna be talking about mealybugs today. Uh, this pothos right here is a little infested. I actually just got this pothos last month. You guys saw this pothos in my plant haul. I actually didn't notice that it had any kind of pests on it when I went to buy it. It was in an outdoor nursery, so you're bound to have any kind of pests when your plants are outside, but I feel like I didn't check this thoroughly enough, or maybe I just missed it. I mean, it only really takes a couple mealybugs for them to just blast off and just completely invade your plants. I actually was cleaning out one of my propagations of this plant, and I wound up finding that this pothos was infested with mealybugs. So if you guys can see, especially the tip right there, let's see if I can. Ugh, gross. They're all over this poor little cutting. Like, I don't understand. I went to like refill the water and it was just, I, I noticed that I was like, oh wow, like, we're gonna have to treat you. Normally, I have a hard time doing these type of videos just because anytime I see pests, I freak out and I just immediately just go and treat them. So I decided to take a deep breath and do a video on this to show you guys my process. I know that a lot of you have been dealing with mealybugs, so I wanted to do this just to show you guys how I take care of them and how to basically prevent them from coming back. So before I dive into treatment and basically preventative, I want to talk about what are mealybugs. Some of you may not even know what mealybugs are. If you are one of those people, I wish that I was you because I have had issues here and there with mealybugs on my plants for the last couple of years. They tend to pop back up around this time of year. I don't know why, but for me, I get a lot of pests around August and September. I don't know if that's just the growing season for them or what, but during the spring and summer, I typically don't have any pests. And around, honestly, after fall, I really don't have any pests. I mean, this is the time of year where I found thrips for the first time last year, which was not a fun process, but I am just slowly starting to notice more pests, even thrips, coming back onto my plants. The way you can identify a mealybug is basically they are little soft-bodied white grayish bugs that live on your plants. They typically like to stay on newer leaves, but they're not picky. They will climb on any leaf, to be honest with you. But you'll typically find most of them or at least a good amount of them on newer leaves. That is a good starting place when you're treating them, is just to kind of find any of the newer leaves that are popping up. It's also kind of a dead giveaway for them because if they're, you know, if you look at all the new unfurled leaves and you see mealybugs, you probably have a little bit of an infestation. But basically what they do is you'll find the little bugs, but you also can find small patches of like cotton-like white powdery-ish material on your plants. They usually, for me, for this pothos, they're usually in the like crooks of the plant. So they'll kind of be in that or they'll be in like the little like nooks and crannies of the leaf base on the stem. So they like to nest in there. Mealybugs like to feed on your plant leaves they will suck out all the plant juices. So basically to kind of know how that's, what's happening with your plant is, a lot of times it will actually just look like it's thirsty, but it will be kind of sporadic, like random leaves will just kind of be wrinkly and kind of maybe start to yellow. That's basically the mealybug just draining the poor plant or the poor leaf of all its juices, all its moisture and just having a good time with that. That is one way you can find out, but really it's just the white powdery substance on your plants. Now there are mealybugs that live in the soil. You can get root mealies, which are very similar to normal mealybugs. 
They do look a little bit different. Um, I find that the root mealies look a little bit more like a little grain of rice, like a very small grain of rice, almost like new thrips, like the baby thrips, if you've seen those. They kind of look like that, but you'll also see the white powdery little nests here and there all over your roots. I've actually been dealing with root mealies as well. I don't have a plant that has root mealies because I'm a psycho when I see any of my plants have pests. I just immediately treat it then and there. I will go over the process of how I took care of that just in case you guys are going through that as well. The only thing with root mealies is it's very hard to tell that you have root mealies until it's kind of too late. But I'll get to that in a minute once I get into treatment. So I'll show you this because this is basically, I have seen a lot of mealybugs on this main pothos, but I did take a cutting of this when I first got it. Um, it was just kind of long and this one stem was really long. So I decided to kind of cut it and propagate it. But I went to refill the water in this propagation and I noticed all of these mealybugs on there. Really gross. Disgusting. Um, so we're going to be treating that and also treating the main plant. I did treat this plant a couple of days ago. I wound up spraying it with Captain Jack's, but apparently that is not rated for mealybugs. It's not rated for mealybugs or scale. Really like spider mites and thrips, it works great on, but apparently it doesn't work with mealybugs. So I have another mixture that I'm going to show you guys in a minute that I'm going to be spraying on the plant. Let's talk about treatment. So when you're treating your plant for mealybugs, I have seen a lot of conflicting things on the internet. One being the idea of using dish soap. I've been seeing here and there to use Dawn dish detergent in your mixture for when you spray down your plants. I would say yeah, like I have done that before in the past, but the thing is, is apparently there's a lot of abrasives that are in Dawn dish detergent that can harm the leaves. And also when you use Dawn dish detergent, it can also strip away the natural oils that live on the plant leaves. So you wanna make sure that you don't strip those away. But I've used Dawn dish detergent on my plants before, like not straight up, but like in like a neem oil mixture when I used to wipe down the leaves. I've never had an issue. Let me know in the comments if you guys use Dawn dish detergent because I kind of am curious to see like what everybody else's thoughts are on that. But for today, because I don't wanna get blasted in the comment section, I'm not gonna use Dawn detergent today. What I'm going to be using today is I have a mixture in this method bottle. I made sure I really cleaned it out. I've actually used this bottle for about a year now. Um, but this creamy substance, there is a little bit of Captain Jack still left in there. Um, I just kind of just threw everything in here. This is actually a mix of this insecticidal soap by Safer Brand. Um, I also added some neem oil because I read online that that actually helps really well. And then the only thing that this doesn't have is it doesn't have any rubbing alcohol. So rubbing alcohol is very effective on mealybugs. Basically the rubbing alcohol destroys their protective barrier, which winds up killing them. So it's great for treatments like I'm going to do on my propagation. So that propagation, because there are so many visible bugs and a little bit of like a nest, I'm going to show you basically how I take straight rubbing alcohol and just wipe off those bugs. Anytime you see mealybugs on the leaves, you want to grab like a cotton swab or a dish towel or a Q-tip or something like that and just be able to wipe them off. You wanna dab the bugs with rubbing alcohol, which winds up turning them from the white color that you see on the plants to like a brown kind of pinkish color. 
So that is a kind of uh, indication that you've destroyed their protective barrier and you've also killed them. But it's really more effective if you use it as like a contact treatment. I actually had mealybugs last year on my Pothos Enjoy. It was actually kind of therapeutic to just like take a cotton swab and then just sit there with my plant and just dab all the little bugs off. It kind of was a little weirdly like just calming. And I did that for, oh my gosh, like at least two months. I would just go back, make sure, and until I didn't see anything, I would just keep doing that every week. Every week, just go back and do it. So speaking of rubbing alcohol, I know that I don't have anything to show you, but with the root mealies, Usually it's kind of hard to tell when you have root mealies because they attack from the roots, which winds up depriving the plant completely of all nutrient and moisture. Your plant will start to show that it's not growing and it will start to constantly look thirsty. I had this happen to my Japanese Aurelia. Um, it just completely got just mangled with these root mealies. So what I did with that Japanese Aurelia and also recently with my Alocasia Regal Shields is I started to notice that it didn't grow. It's not, it wasn't growing any new leaves. And I was like, you know, there's, there's something wrong. I've been fertilizing, I've been doing everything right. So I kind of took it out because my thought was that it was root bound and it wasn't growing because it didn't have enough room to grow. Well, <laughs> I wound up finding the little patches of like that cotton-like substance on the roots and throughout the soil. So when you find stuff like that, you'll wanna discard that soil completely. After that, you want to completely rinse off all that root. So you wanna completely rinse off any type of soil or anything that is left on those roots. Really clean them off as gently as possible, but also making sure that there's nothing left over. Afterward, I took a mix of water and rubbing alcohol. It was a very, very diluted version of the rubbing alcohol. So you wanna make sure that when you're treating your plants with the rubbing alcohol, you have to dilute it. Roots are very absorbent and they will absorb the rubbing alcohol. And you don't want your plant to absorb too much rubbing alcohol because that actually can cause your plant to dry out. It can cause it to basically dehydrate it. And you don't wanna do that. It's already probably dehydrated from the mealies, so you don't wanna do it even further with the alcohol. And then afterward, I just, I made sure that I rinsed the roots back off really, really well after I did the treatment and I didn't see any more root mealies or anything like that. So I just potted it back up into fresh soil. And of course I made sure I cleaned out the pot. I did. I was able to save 90% of the roots. There were some that um, kind of really got mangled in with the root mealies. It was uh, kind of an easier process to do than I thought. But then again, you know, anytime you have pests, especially if you have pests, as bad as I did, you never know where they're lurking. So after you do your treatment, you're gonna obviously want to isolate your plant for the next month or two. And you're gonna wanna retreat your plant every 10 to 12 days. That is going to basically kind of stop that life cycle of those mealybugs. And you're gonna be able to kind of catch it as you go. You wanna just make sure that you keep up with the treatments every 10 to 12 days. If you wait too, too long, then it can become a problem again, or it can become an even worse problem eventually if you let it go too long. For me, whenever I have plants, I isolate them for one to two months in an area that doesn't have plants. Don't be like me and fill every surface with plants. You wanna have a designated area that has a good amount of light that your plant can still thrive. I would say at least five to 10 feet away. Any of these bugs can crawl. So you wanna make sure that it's just in a big enough area that the plants are not going to be able to infest one another. Now, mealybugs only really transfer from plant to plant if the plant is touching another plant, which is great for isolation. So, 
I mean, you could probably get away with five feet, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to be isolating my plants in probably another room. So let's get started. Let me put this plant kind of over here to the side and let's take off these mealybugs off of this poor little propagation. It's just really having a hard time with all these mealies. Ugh. And honestly, guys, there are less mealies on this. I think that they're traveling down to their nest. <sighs> they're so gross. Okay, so most of the mealies you can see are on this leaf, especially on the tip. I do have some, I don't know if you guys can see. There's like a white powdery substance in the nooks. So you'll wanna basically just take care of that. So this is actually going to be used afterward. I'm going to be taking my full pothos and these cuttings and putting them in the shower and we're gonna like take care of them that way. But for this, just to wipe off any uh, visible bugs, I'm going to be taking some rubbing alcohol. And I don't have any cotton balls. Cotton balls are actually easier to use, but I have these Q-tips. So that's what we're going to be using today. And if you have propagations like I do and you're trying to treat the propagations, make sure that you're not flying them around. They can fall off and you don't want the bugs on there. So you can probably see that little nest in there. It's so gross. Okay, so I'll kind of show you what it does. So you can see, probably, I don't know if the camera will pick that up, little tiny specks on there and those are dead bugs. So you'll basically just want to keep going in and wiping off any white that you see on there. And when you have these little like nooks and crannies of your plants, you're going to want to make sure that you get deep in there. You gotta make sure that you really wanna get inside there and pull off any bugs that may be lurking. So just to show you kind of like how bad this one leaf is, you can probably see like Now you can probably see little dots that I didn't get the mealies completely off because this Q-tip is full of them. So I need to flip it around. But it's just like, weirdly therapeutic to just go through and just like wipe off your leaves. And then you can see like all of those little dead bugs on there.
Now for some reason I don't see a lot on this cutting so um, I just kind of went through and just tried to get as many like little white things as possible and then um, I also made sure that I cleaned this out and just made sure that that was all taken care of. But luckily this little leaf that kind of unfurled was under the water so it never got um, infested with the mealybugs. All right. So those are good for now. Now it's time to take care of this big pothos. So for this pothos, I did treat this pothos a couple of days ago. I wound up spraying the whole plant with Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew, which I did learn again that it's not rated for mealybugs or scale. So I don't think that it did anything. Obviously it probably didn't. So I made this mixture like I had mentioned, it has the insecticidal soap in it and it also has neem oil. So I'm going to be kind of spraying this whole plant. And just so I don't ruin this whole thing, I'm going to add the rubbing alcohol I put in a little hydrogen peroxide bottle. It's been cleaned, don't worry. Um, but I put a diluted, very diluted rubbing alcohol in here that I'm going to be spraying like before. So I'm going to be spraying the whole plant with the rubbing alcohol solution. And then afterward, I'm going to be going in with this. I really want the rubbing alcohol to get any of the bugs that I may have not have seen. I want to be able to make sure that it completely kills those off. I know that the insecticidal soap will kill it off as well, but I just want to make sure that I know for sure that this will kill it. So I just want to kind of do that first. So I'm going to take you guys into my bathroom so I can do this in the shower just because it's easier when I spray. I'm not spraying all over my house. All right, so to start off, I'm going to probably spray this one first. So I'm gonna move this out of the way a little bit. And I'm gonna spray this one first, just cause I feel like this is the worst off. Also the roots kind of rotted. I did leave it. Um, it kind of got a little dried out too long and it just, it, it wound up kind of rotting, but it's a bathos, so I'm gonna do that afterward. But I'm gonna make sure that I spray the whole plant down with the rubbing alcohol solution and make sure that I really get into the, the little, um, little armpit, plant armpit. I'm also gonna put this back in the water just so it soaks soaks up. I don't wanna get that too much like um, like with the rubbing alcohol in the now this was the worst cutting. The other one I didn't see much, but this one, and I'm completely soaking these leaves because you want to make sure that you get everything. This pothos is actually sitting like on, like right beneath my desk. And right above this plant was the new Brazil that I got, that big Brazil. So I'm kind of nervous that that might have mealybugs, but time will tell and I will find out eventually. All right, so I did kind of look at this off camera to see if I saw any bugs and I don't see anything. So I'm still gonna go ahead and go through with the rubbing alcohol and really just get it good. And then afterward, like I said, we're gonna use the solution, so. Anytime you treat your plants too, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do a test on your plant. I'm not with the pothos, just because pothos are very hardy. If 
you're using a plant like the more delicate, like a ranta or calathea or alocasia, you're gonna wanna make sure that you, you can do like a test leaf just to make sure that it does okay. <laughs> Kinda brings me back to my hair, my hair days when I used to do hair. Cause like, you know, if anybody had like a reaction, we would do like a test spot on like the back of their, um, like on the back of their ear or on like the um, little part of their arm to make sure that they weren't like allergic to <laughs> hair color. <laughs> And it kind of brings me back to that, where I'm like, yeah, oh, okay, a little test, a little test strip. But yeah, like I've had issues in the past with like treatments on my Maranta, where, or even my Begonia, that was bad. I put, um, I wanted to just like freshen up my Begonia and my Begonia Maculata wound up dying because I, wound up spraying it down with neem oil just to give it a little freshen up and it did not like that it like the leaves completely burned so you want to make sure that you're doing that also speaking of burn this room is lit up right now with my ring light but if i did not have any lights on it'd be pretty dark in here you want to make sure that you keep your plant in a darker room for a couple hours. Do not put this back in the sun. I would say treat it like, if you don't have a dark room, treat it at night. But if you have a darker area, put it in there for like six to eight hours. Like really make sure that that treatment is not going to burn your leaves, especially with neem oil. Neem oil can burn the crap out of your leaves if you don't have it on there. So if you have like your plants like treated with neem oil and you wind up doing that, it can burn your leaves really bad. So you want to make sure that you be careful with that. And I'm making sure that I'm getting both undersides of my leaves and I'm also lifting up the, the stems and getting the inside, also getting like these baby leaves really well. You want it soaking, saturated. This bottle was full and it feels like it's about half full now. Now, yeah, I know that this is a bigger plant that I have to treat, but it's, you know, it's, it's, one of those things where you need to really make sure that everything is fully saturated, especially the newer leaves that are coming in. Now we're gonna go in with this. So we're gonna treat these again. And if you've ever smelled insecticidal soap and neem oil, it smells awful. The Cat and Jack's actually smells really, really, I wouldn't say really good actually, but I would say like it smells, it doesn't smell bad. But this has a mix of the neem oil and it stinks. Ugh, I hate the smell of it. She's dripping, she's good. I think we are all done with that. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let that sit 
And I'm gonna let that kind of chill in this room for basically the rest of the day. Um, I'll probably tend to it in the morning, but this plant is going to kind of hang out in the bathroom. Maybe after it dries, I might take it and put it in its quarantine spot, which by then it will be dark. Um, so it should be fine. We're gonna let this sit, we're gonna let it soak, and then we're gonna talk about preventative. To prevent this from happening in the first place, you wanna make sure that you quarantine any of your plants when you first buy them. You wanna make sure that any plants that you that you buy from a store, whether you've bought from them a hundred times or you've just purchased them for the first time, treating your plants before this happens is going to save you from a nightmare, especially if you have a ton of plants like I do. The thought of the mealybugs like infesting all my plants just is nightmare fuel and I don't even want to think about that. I had that experience last year with the thrips, so that was uh, not fun <laughs> at all. Another thing you can do for preventative is to get the systemic granules. So I actually just ordered some on Amazon, so it should be here soon. So these granules, you basically measure out depending on how big your pot is and you sprinkle them on your topsoil and you water it in. Only water when your plant needs to be watered. But what that does is it's, I like to think of it as like a flea treatment for your plants. So what it does is when you water it into your plants, your plant will absorb it and it will go throughout your whole plant system. So it will be in the leaves and everything. And when a pest bites it, it winds up dying. Those are great because it's kind of like a treatment that you don't really have to worry about too much. So I'm definitely going to be getting those granules for two reasons. One, because of the mealybugs and two, because of the root mealies, because you can't really treat root mealies unless you use like systemic granules or anything like that. Um, I found that hydrogen peroxide doesn't kill them, which is my go-to for like soil pests. I'm hoping that the systemic granules will take care of the root mealies if I do have them on any other plants. And then also with the um, regular mealies and even the thrips and any other pests that it comes in contact with, it will take care of that. With the systemic granules though, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you don't have a pet or anybody that's going to be like munching on your plants. It's not organic, so even if you wanna put it on like your outdoor like vegetable garden or herb garden, just keep in mind that it's going to be in the plant. So systemic granules are probably not good for any plants that are going to be eaten. So just keep that in mind if you're kind of thinking about that. So that's basically it. That is what I do to treat mealybugs and basically how to prevent them. Let me know in the comments if you have mealybugs and you're kind of battling them or if there is another pest that you want me to kind of touch on. I'm trying to be better with not completely just jumping the gun and treating the plant and maybe just isolate it and wait a couple days and then wind up re recording it. So I'm, I'm trying to be better with that because I think these videos are really educational and they're really good to know. Even if you know how to deal with mealybugs, there may be things that I did in my research that I learned that I shared today. That's basically it. But hopefully the next couple of days, I will um, check that plant and it shouldn't have any mealies. Um, if it does, again, I'm gonna keep treating it every 10 to 12 days just to make sure. But that's basically it. So I hope you guys all have a great day and stay botanical.